What's up guys? Behind me this time, as you will see here, is a Ford F-150. So as you can imagine, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different today, but this was a good donor to show you an example of something that I've seen people ask about. And that is, what does it mean when your brakes are grinding? And this applies to pretty much every car that has disc brakes. So even Grand Prix, Tauruses, anything, this is pretty much the same. This truck came in making a horrible grinding noise in the front. So I'm gonna show you exactly what that is and what I'm gonna to do to fix it. So we've removed the right front wheel and right away, here's your problem. So when you hear that noise, this is what's happening to your rotor. See right here, this brake pad has worn completely through and has chewed the rotor up. So now this rotor is too damaged to be reused and is gonna to have to be replaced, which in this case is a hub rotor, so it's gonna be this whole piece, and the pads are gonna to have to be replaced, and then we're gonna to have to look at this caliper. So removing this, not too difficult. You basically got two 12 millimeter bolts, or I'm sorry, 13s. Um, that'll be different sizes for different cars. But most disc brakes are laid out the same way. You have slide pins here, which have bolts that go through the back, or sometimes the bolt is the slide pin, but either way, that's what holds the caliper to the bridge or the bracket, which is right here. Then you have two bolts on the back that hold the bridge over the rotor which we'll take off in a minute. But for right now, for inspection purposes, this is good enough. This is the rear facing pad, which you can see already doesn't have much pad. But the other problem is if you look right here, one side is considerably thicker than the other. Then on the front, this pad is gone. As you can see, the pad is completely off the metal backing plate has worn into the rotor and done quite a bit of damage and the pad actually even tried to come out of the bridge. So, that's no good. Second thing to check, slide pins, which are fairly nasty. When you put them in there, there's play worn in there and if you pull against them, they don't slide super well. So I'm gonna guess that one or more of these is sticking off and on, causing the caliper to apply pressure when it shouldn't. Now the other thing to check is the caliper itself. Now these, this is a dual piston caliper setup. Some cars you'll only have one big one in the middle. This has two smaller ones. Um, next thing I notice immediately, this boot is torn open. The piston on the inside is kind of corroded. It looks like there's a good possibility we could have some sticking there too. So, what we're gonna do, just to make sure that this is completely taken care of, is we're going to take these other two bolts off, take this bridge off, and we're gonna replace this caliper, bridge, and pads at the same time by doing a semi-loaded caliper, which comes with a bridge and a new set of pads, because we're gonna put that on both sides. Then, we're gonna change this rotor which I will talk about in just a minute okay then with the bridge and the caliper out of the way you're gonna need to remove this dust shield which I've already tapped loose but basically you're just gonna take a chisel of some kind right in here and tap it in until it comes loose then it should pull out with that out of the way we're gonna take this cotter key out by bending these tabs down and then pushing it back through. Then we're gonna take this off and there's a nut behind it, which we're gonna remove. Okay, and with those out of the way, this nut actually isn't even tight or even snug, which most of the time it's not. These are what's called packable bearings. This has a bearing on the outside and the inside. You pretty much only see this anymore on older cars 
and two wheel drive pickups. But basically, once this nuts out, if you shake this a little, this outer bearing will pop right out. Then you're gonna wanna look at it. It's a little dry, but the wear doesn't look too bad. Put that down there. Then, and here's the big trick. You have an inner bearing you need to remove and a seal. So, if you take this nut and thread it back on, and I'm gonna try to do this one-handed. I have no idea if this is gonna work. If you pull this out a little, it'll drop down like that. And then, ta-da, seal, bearing in one piece. This bearing looks okay too. It's a little dry. And there you have it. It's off. For this next part, you are going to need a rag, or more accurately, probably several, and a large tub of grease because we're gonna to need to put the bearings into the new rotor. And this is gonna be extremely messy. I don't want my camera in that. So for the sake of that, I'm gonna skip ahead, but I will explain it in a minute. Okay, and with that done, it looks basically like this. And what do we do here, if you look at this bearing, you're gonna take the bearing itself, a lot of this grease, and you're pretty much just forcing grease into the bearing until you see it start to come out because you just wanna make sure that all of this is nice and lubricated. Then, we're gonna, we cleaned this backing plate, got all the metal off the, uh, well, most of the metal, off the ABS sensor, then cleaned this and checked it for any kind of scoring or burrs or anything that might cause problems with the new bearing. And then, we're gonna put this back on here. Okay, so with this back on and the outer bearing back in, make sure that washer is still behind there and this nut back on, what you have to do is set the preload on the bearing. Now, once again, if you have a car which has slip-on rotors, the rotor will just fall right off, you put the new one on, you don't have to go through any of this, so just be glad that you don't. This being a two-wheel drive truck, though, we do. So, the bearings are in there. Now, you do not want to tighten this nut until it stops. You do not just tighten it as tight as you can, you'll tear the bearings up. What you do, there are more than one ways to set preload. I know people who torque them to a very low spec. I know a lot of different ways. What I generally do though, is I will snug this to zero play. And that is, if it's loose, we will back it off a little bit, and you move this, it moves. As you snug it with pliers, you will reach a point where it is just snug enough that when you shake it, it doesn't move. That's generally where I set it. Okay, then you're gonna take this, which is what keeps the nut from being able to move. You're gonna set this on here. It'll go a lot of different ways until this hole lines up through the middle. Then you're just gonna take cotter key or reuse the old one, which is what I'm trying to do here and you're gonna put it through this hole and then you're just gonna bend it around so that it can't move or more accurately that it can't come out like that. Then it's just a matter of tapping this but you wanna tap around the outside don't hit the middle or you'll cave it in. Then because we're thorough we're gonna wipe that off that way we can check for leaks and stuff later and there is your rotor. So as I'm getting ready to put this bridge back, I noticed another potential problem. This is the hardware that goes in here that the pad rides against. This is one side. This is what the other side looks like. Completely missing a piece. I don't know if that happened when the pad wore all the way through and tried to eject itself or if this was there all along but fortunately the new pads come with hardware so we're going to be replacing that anyway and here we have the new caliper this particular brand actually comes coated black which i like and you'll notice the slide pins are already here the boots are here the hardware is here everything looks good then you're going to lube this part that the pad rides on, which you're using the fancy synthetic grease, which is purple for whatever reason. Okay, so then you're gonna put the pads back in the bridge. 
you're gonna lubricate the parts of the caliper like the slide pins inside here and the part that the pad has to slide against, then you're gonna bolt the caliper back in here and there. Now, when I'm changing calipers, I always bolt the caliper back on and finish all of this first. The reason being, when you go to move the hose over, you're gonna be introducing air into the system. I don't like to have the hose disconnected very long because I don't want any more air to get in there than half to. So, I always do this first, unbolt the hose, then swap it as quickly as I can over here and bolt it back down. That minimizes how much air gets into the system, which is what I'm gonna do now. Okay, the next step, because I'm here by myself, is I'm gonna gravity bleed this new caliper. So what I've got, here's the re reservoir. The cap is off and I filled it all the way up. Then over here at the caliper, I've actually taken the bleeder screw out, but you don't have to do that. But what you're doing here is you need to open it and then you're waiting for fluid to come out, which is what it's doing right here. Okay, so then what I did was put the bleeder screw back in, uh, top this off, pump the brake pedal up a few times to extend the caliper and re-top this off. It's very important that this not ever run out. If you get air in this, you're gonna have a whole different set of things to do. Okay, and then to bleed it out, this is the rig I've got here. This is a vacuum pump put to this fluid reservoir, put to the bleeder, which I then also seal threads on. I recommend doing that because otherwise sometimes these vacuum bleeders will actually pull air past the threads and not do a very good job of bleeding it. And that's basically it for this side. Now I just have to go do the other side and then we'll test drive it and see how it does. Okay, so on inspecting this side, this is the inboard pad and it looks quite bad also. The inboard part of the rotor is pretty bad looking too. So, we're definitely not going to be able to reuse this rotor. We're not going to be able to reuse these pads. But, they wore pretty evenly. So we are going to be able to reuse the caliper. And as usual, torque all fasteners, especially lug nuts, to the manufacturer's specification. I'm done with the test drive. Everything works and sounds good. I think we're good to go. That'll be the end of this one. You guys know the drill. Drop me a like, drop me a comment, and I will see you next week. Peace out.